This is the Swarm and Shoot Football Show with me, Manny Matsakis, the head football coach at Defiance College. We feature Defiance College football and everything that influences our program. This show is brought to you by our friends at Big B Coffee right across campus on North Clinton Street. I'm actually having a cup right now, so uh, everybody uh, check it out on YouTube and um, you can see the video of the cup and uh, how delicious this beverage is. Uh, Get the finest coffee beverages, even tea, in Defiance, as well as great pastries, breakfast sandwiches to start your day off, and you can even get a pick-me-up like a lot of our coaching staff does in the afternoon. I'd also like to bring on board the maker of this fine apparel right here, uh, and not not just Nike, but we're talking about BSN Sports, all right? I'd like to bring on board our latest sponsor, BSN Sports, and Rob Held, and his sales team are the professionals you need to get in touch with for all your sporting goods and apparel needs in Ohio. Not only do they work with high school and college sports teams, they also deliver outstanding apparel to businesses so they can brand themselves in a first-class manner. This is episode number 43, and uh, today I actually got my uh, Big B... um birthday version to give you a free one every year on your birthday so last week was my birthday on april 16th and um got an email from him and it's a pretty good setup for you so uh, excited about that thanks everybody over there at big b coffee even though we're just working through the drive through only and it is packed over there which is awesome um today's topic is the current state of recruiting um, at Defiance College uh, regarding football and everything we're doing around. I just want to make sure everybody gets a good understanding. I mean, as we're heading into the second half of April um, with our virtual operations, well over a month of that at this point, uh, we've had to make some adjustments in the way we deliver our message to prospects for this year's incoming roster and uh, juniors, uh, because we're already we've been working on those guys in advance um, for the 2021 class as well. So first of all, just to give everybody a solid insight as to where we are and why we're here uh, in this situation. Um, when I got here in 2018, it was August, and I was the fourth head coach in four years. And you know, we all realize that, anybody close to the program. And when you have that, it's very difficult to have a high retention rate. The roster size was low. Uh, in 2018, it was, in the, it was around 70. And then last year, we brought it up to 81. And, and that was after having a pretty large senior class my first year here. So we're able to bring in a pretty solid group of players uh, just to, and, and actually increase the roster. But retainment over the five years uh, prior of the newcomers coming in was around 20%. It was actually 19%. And I, I would have to attribute that to the change in the program over that time. But the good news on one front is – um, retention has gone up significantly. And uh, from last year, we went, f- we went up to 50% of our newcomers coming back. So that's what we're expecting at this point. These are guys that have already signed up for classes, will be here this fall. So of all that group in t- 2019 that came in, 50%. And I would attribute that to um, academic support Systems being in place, Lisa Crummins Hancock doing a great job over there. Our coaching staff staying on top of our players individually, and uh, Lisa Marslick and Mercedes Clay, you know, and and Jen Walton working so hard in student life to make this a great experience for our players. And uh, I'm excited and grateful that 2020 will be my third season at Defiance College. And it just shows uh, a continuity and the administration understands what it takes uh, to turn around this once proud program. Now, with all that This is what it was like before. I think it bodes well for everybody to get a state of the union. And and that is like, where are we sitting right now, opposed to just one year ago in some key areas? Because I want you to picture this. There's a funnel as we look at it. And at the beginning of the funnel, there are applications. How many football players are applying to the college? And then from there, 
the cream starts to rise at the top because the funnel goes down more and there's a certain number of football players are actually admitted to the college because they have the academic wherewithal to do what it takes to get it done here at Defiance College. And then from that, then we look at the film and we, we evaluate these players and the top ones are coming here on visits. So it goes applications, admits, visits. And then once we keep vetting the process, then we start to get deposits and we know who's coming in. So that's that's the funnel as we work it here. And, and that's pretty much how it works everywhere in the, at the small college level. Now, let me give you the comparison 2019 to 2020. All right. Applications, 2019, 545. Applications, 2020, 822. All right. Admits, 2019, 279. This year right now, 743. Actual visits. A year ago, it was 163 visits. Right now, 296 visits. And then when you start to look at deposits, uh, a year ago, we had 24 deposits. Today, we have 32. So you can see with the retention being so much better and our numbers increasing from one year to the next, I would say right now, knowing that we also have any, around 40 other guys that are in the commitment phase that will be deposits, uh, telling us they're coming and so forth, um, we feel pretty good that the roster size is going to range between 105 and 120. So if you look at going from 70 to 81 to the 105 to 120 range, um, that's exciting for us because that, that starts to at least set the foundation for stability here in our football program. Last season, we were easily the youngest team in the Heartland Conference uh, and most likely at, in the nation at any level. I mean, you start thinking about how many programs can say they started between 12 and and upwards of 17 freshmen on any particular weekend. That was where we range with newcomers, you know, freshmen starting in our program. That's unheard of. I mean, I look at this one way as an opportunity because these young men had a chance to play and get game experience at a very high level early in their careers. That That's a big plus for us. And then on the other end of this, consider that most teams – started between one and three freshmen on their roster. And, you know, last year, the best teams didn't start any. So you start looking at some of the teams we played um, that were really, really good. You know, it's rare that a freshman is starting. Now they'll get in and get some reps on special teams or something. But that's about it. So, I mean, knowing that and seeing that our guys coming back that got all this experience as sophomores uh, this year will have this opportunity to build on that. And even though the whole the pandemic is hit and, and we don't have time, we couldn't have spring ball, nobody has spring ball. I think our it would have been nice to have been able to get these guys up to speed from a physical perspective, continue the weight program and all these things that we would have done. But, um, you know, we've had to do it virtually and uh, video um, sessions with our guys and teaching them the offense and the defense, um, you know, with Google Hangout meetings and so forth. So I, I think we've done a good job to get us to where we are right now, as good as anybody that I've seen at this point. Now, to wrap this up, I just want to let you know, um, as I'm looking at this as a head coach, how have we been able to put ourselves in such a good position coming into this fall? Uh, you know, increasing the roster size and, and making sure we've got some things, even though there's been a pandemic, you know, and, and we haven't been able to get out and recruit. All the recruiting we're doing right now is virtual, and we're fortunate – that we're doing a pretty good job with that. I think number one, there's four, there's four things I want to share with you, um, how we put ourselves in a good position. Number one, early targeting of junior prospects. Uh, last winter we did it. We did, we've done it this year, heavy on the junior prospects right now. And I think that um, is really important because building that communication pipeline early with prospects is important. And they know we're going to be here. You know, I would, 
It's not surprising to me that Coach Shank, uh, our recruiting coordinator, uh, who it's easy for me to say he, he is the best in the country. I see the way he recruits, the way he operates. It's first class. He understands what it is he's doing. And we're able to increase so much our recruiting efforts on a consistent basis because because Chris has done that. Now, you know, as they say, you know, uh, you're a product of who you learn from. And just by osmosis, his father, Larry Shank, was my coach um, at Capital University. And what I thought was interesting is when I came in as a freshman at Capital University, we had 105 freshmen brought in. And upwards of, I, I'm almost certain of this, between 65 to 70 of those uh, freshmen that came in were, were Larry Shank's signees. He was, he was known as the best recruiter around uh, in the Ohio Athletic Conference and, you know, just in the region. He was just fantastic. So when you look at that, I think Chris has realized uh, the importance of recruiting and how it's not a once-in-a-while deal. It's, an, it's, an, it's a year-round process. And because he's so good at that and he learned from his father um, – we get the benefit from that as well. Now, the second thing that has put us into such a good position is, I believe, is our public relations campaign. It's second to none at this level. I get comments all over the country from guys saying, holy smokes, number one, your social media is so good. Uh, your website content, they look at our swarmandshoot.com, and they don't see that with other, with other college programs, doing something to that level. Uh, this podcast has separated us out amongst other people we compete with, other programs we can put. Nobody is doing this on a consistent basis. Okay, oh, here's a radio interview. Let's post it on our school website. Understand, this is the 43rd consecutive week we have produced this, on, a, and it comes out every Thursday. And if you want to be alerted to it, all you have to do is, is put your email into the pop-out form, and they're right there, and then you're good to go, and you will know when everything is loaded on that Thursday. And we've hit it every week, and I think it's important for recruits, for our fans, and everybody to know that we want to make sure that we're building the fan base and the recruiting base uh, to unforeseen levels here at Defiance College. And to be a Yellow Jacket is very important um, and, and a great opportunity for, for everybody to join in what we're doing here at Defiance College. I think number three for you is the diligent effort, and I, I put this on the athletes and their parents to actually come on campus and now to participate in our virtual visit program. The number of... I, I mean, I stopped counting after about 30, 40 guys when I started to see how many guys were, were driving up in winter from Florida, Texas, Georgia, Tennessee, to name a few, New Jersey. They're all coming in to come in for an overnight visit to see Defiance College. And that's, that's amazing to me. Uh, some guys will fly in. I get it. But their whole families want to come and see this. And I think that is what's important when parents are truly getting a good understanding of what it is that we offer here from an education standpoint and a football standpoint, student life, the experience here is tremendous and unlike any other small college. And um, I think our coaching staff bodes well because we're selling it well enough to get guys to make the trip and those guys are converting. I mean, and the final thing that I want to share with you is the support from our administration to recruit these players coast to coast. Remember, 17 states are represented on our roster, and um, and and we've been able to get players from all over and to, to combine with these great players in our region. So it's, it's really awesome because I think we're building something that other small colleges are not in our part of the country, where what happens is... If you're a player from, let's say, Georgia, right, and you go to another school in Ohio, right, you're an outsider at every other school in Ohio. There's not as many out-of-state guys as us. Right? So you're considered an outsider, and you're all in a different situation. Here, you look at it, it's like we flipped it. And these out-of-state guys are coming in, and it's like, hey, 
you know, my best buddy's from Texas and I'm from Florida and so forth. And all this stuff starts to fit together. And we have just enough of the best players in our region on this roster that, that gives us that hometown feel. And the town is enjoying this uh, special mix of student athletes in our football program. So I think that that sets us apart from everybody else. And that's a direction that we're headed. And I want to thank everybody for joining the show today. And um, as always, we'll be back next week. Thank you for joining us on this latest episode of the Swarm and Shoot football show. If you're listening to this podcast, make sure to subscribe in iTunes, give us a rating, comment on the show. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell in the top corner there so you can get notifications when we release the next show. Feel free to comment below on a specific show and we'll answer those questions as we need to. If you'd like to step up to the next level and get all kinds of updates, go to our website, swarmandshoot.com, where you'll get up-to-date alerts on all of our podcasts. You'll have the audio on there. There's actually a video player where you can scroll through each and every episode that we have um, of the podcast from the, from the YouTube version. So you never really have to leave the site. You also see some uh, features on various players, our coaching staff bios, all types of things going on in our program. Um, when our golf scramble is, different fundraisers we do, just insights for you that take you to that next level, which is what swarmandshoot.com will do for you. Take a minute and subscribe with your email. When you log on, there'll actually probably be a pop-up about six seconds into it, and it gives you a chance to go in, and, and that will put you into our email database. So every time we update, you get an email knowing that uh, we're basically set to go on the next episode of the podcast or any news that's coming out. Appreciate you uh, supporting the program and um, look forward to a wonderful season.